Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 Xbox 360 review. Today I'm finally going to be taking a look at Gears of War. I say it finally because I've had the game since launch. It's one of my all-time favourites. It's just the type of game that I absolutely love. And I will be doing two and three. And to be fair, all three will probably go up together. I'll also be mentioning the PC version of this game. Because obviously there isn't a two or three on the PC. And there never will be. And I'll be mentioning it because I did buy it for, well, the reasons I'll mention later. So, at the start you've got campaign, you've got versus. You can go online or split screen. Not that anyone's playing this one. They're going to be playing Gears 3. So, I'm just going to cover the online on Gears 3. Uh, obviously the achievements are achievements. Game, you can change a few things. You can't customise your controls or anything. You can just change the sensitivity and you can choose predefined sets. But the default ones are actually really good, at least I think so. I think they work better, especially the reload button being the right bumper. It's more fluid and it's easier to like for example move and aim instead of having to take your finger off to hit that. You can just nudge that. So, I'll be going on split screen, because the game does have two player split screen, and it's a game that I've beaten many, many, many a time in split screen. I've also beaten it on my own, on Insane, and beaten it online too, with a mate. So, there's five acts overall, and this is where I'm going to start mentioning the uh, PC version, because on the PC version, you actually get an extra set of five chapters in between the end of Act 4 and Act 5. Now, I'm not going to say the story because I don't want to spoil it for anyone and I personally think the story of Gears is excellent. There's some people out there who slag it off and see it a bit corny and cheesy, but I personally love it. And so that I don't do any spoilers, I'll cut after this. Right then, the uh, PC chapters. Basically, there's five chapters and again, I'm not going to mention the story or spoil anything like that. All I'm going to mention is the whole point of the game is you're in a jail cell and it says 14 days after E deer, which is emergence deer and this war's been going on and that's pretty much all you need to know without, like, to get into the game. It explains things as it goes across, obviously, the three games, but I'm not going to spoil that because whereas a lot of people bash the story, I personally love it. So, the, uh... PC chapters. In between Act 4 and Act 5 on this game, on the Xbox version, it use, it basically goes from driving away after completing something to a train station where you've got to put the final plan into effect. And it's never really explained properly, it's always felt like there was something missing and sure enough a year after the game comes out on the Xbox they release it on the PC with these five chapters and it goes from driving away to the train station to driving away to a bridge which is, which is down you've got to repair the electricity to build the bridge again, you've, you get to fight a Brumac something you wouldn't actually get to fight until Gears of War 2 and it's a really good boss fight, it's one that the game needs I personally think the five chapters are excellent and I, they said when it was released they'd never come to the Xbox because it would take huge patches bigger than they've ever done before I don't see why they can't do it because even if they charge for it I know a hell of a lot of players who are Gears fanboys and I'm one myself, I'll admit it, I absolutely love these games, who would gladly pay something like 800 points because it adds about 2 hours to a game that was about 10 hours long so it takes it from 10 to 12 hours and it's just absolutely fantastic, the, the story to it, the gameplay to it, it's some of the best chapters in the game and the exclusive to the PC. So. It's annoying that I had to buy the PC version just to play them, and I've now since got rid of the PC version. But, uh, only other thing I can quickly mention before moving on, the AI on the game does also have a tendency to how long the game takes, because on one player the AI is awful. The, uh, not the enemy AI, that's pretty much perfect. You get the enemy AI spot on, it's really hard, especially on insane difficulty. It's just brutal at times, but the... Friendly AI, you die all the time because of him, because he runs out and gets himself killed. Uh, it's just truly terrible. It's the type of game you definitely want to play co-op with a friend. If not, then it's probably going to add four or five hours onto the game's lifespan because of how bad the friendly AI is. Um, I'll also very quickly mention active reloading, which is something the game introduced, which I quite like. It's basically, when you go to reload, a little bar appears with a little white tab, and if you get it just perfect, your ammo starts to flash. Any ammo that you used, whether it's one bullet or 20 or whatever, and then that ammo for a little time after is actually more powerful because you've done such a good reload. 
doesn't really make sense in the real world. It's not the type of thing that I think in any war someone said, you know what, those bullets worked better because I got the clip just right. But it makes sense in the Gears world and it's something I'm glad they've done because it's just another little perk that really set this game apart from anything else. There's a few things to mention about the game that, if you've never played it before, what, what you need to know. First up, you've just saw one of them there, the fact that this game decided that guns weren't violent enough, neither were chainsaws, so they were going to do a chainsaw on the end of a gun. And they're extremely fun, it's something I love killing people with on every single Gears, especially the third one, I think I like it even more on the third one. Uh, and the weapon set on the game is just excellent, you get your machine guns, you get your burst fire guns, you get your pistols, you get shotguns, you get... Um, trying to remember which ones are just localised to this one and not on the others. Uh, you get long shots which are sniper rifles, you get boom shots which are grenade launcher type things. You can also then get grenades which are really cool and you can blind fire them like that or you can stick them to enemies which is quite nice and makes a nice bang. You can get a hammer of dawn which is basically a computer that points a laser at the ground and a satellite then fires at it from space and kills your enemies. It's quite nice, it really is. The whole weapon set on the game is just, I think, perfect. I, I do, never really found a weapon that wasn't any good. I found weapons I didn't like from my own personal preference of how to play the game but I didn't really find any weapons that were stupidly weak. It's just things like the shotgun, you really have to be close so I don't like that because when I'm close I'd rather chainsaw people. Enemy variation on the game is also really good. Um, to sum up very quickly, you're fighting things called Locust and the game's set 14 years after E-Deer, which is Emergence Deer. And you don't really find out what's going on until Gears 3, which I'm not going to mention any of that at all. I'm just going to see it. It starts off and you're a bit confused and it all gets clued up. There's only a couple things left hanging and seeing as the DLC isn't out yet for Gears 3, I can't imagine they'll be left hanging for that long. It's, as I say, personally, I'm a huge fan of the story. I think it's done really well. I think the script's done well. I think the voice acting's perfect. Just everything about it. I love the game, other than the multiplayer, which I'm not keen on the deathmatch, and I'll explain that in a bit. But the enemy variation, you get big ones, you get small ones, you get boss types, you get uh, flying enemies. There's just all sorts. There's some grunts that are only really used to be there to throw grenades at you, so grenadiers. You can get ones who uh, have these excellent weapons called torque bows, and I cannot believe in mentioning the weapons I forgot the torque bow. It's my favourite weapon on the game. It's basically a crossbow that, well, a regular bow that you pull back, and when it fires, it fires an explosive arrow. And if you pull back with enough force, it sticks into the enemy. So, for example, you can stick one into the enemy's head and see him running around until he blows up. It's quite nice and violent. And it's just an excellent weapon. The only downside to it is you can't keep it cocked all the time. You have to let it... Well, it automatically fires, so you have to fire it, really, because if it automatically fires, chances are you're going to miss. And it's a bit annoying, because you see these guys, they are absolutely huge. Their muscles are incredibly huge. And I f refuse to believe that they can't pull back on a talk ball for longer than, like, seven seconds. There's uh, then enemies like this. These are one of the boss types, the berserkers, which you can only really kill with a hammer of dawn. Um, but you have to work out puzzle type things first like luring her into place and uh, there's other little sections on the game where you'll split up so one of you will be on the high ground one of you on the low ground and if one of you goes down then there's no chance of revival you automatically die so you have to start the section again because that's the next thing I'm going to mention really the difficulty it's really good it, especially on insane mode it's a really good challenge you'll get killed all the time the uh, end boss is a bit of a beast and is so hard to beat on your own hell he's pretty hard to beat on two player but uh, that what you've just seen there on the screen is basically what I was saying about that you can go down or you can die because if you get hit and wounded then you start to bleed out and your friend can come over hit X revive you or the enemy might just outright kill you and if that happens you go back to the start of the checkpoint so, pretty much nothing else I can mention about the game other than to quickly sum up the multiplayer. As I say, I'm not going to show any of there's no point. I doubt anyone's playing it. But the reason I've never liked the multiplayer is because it's not a straight deathmatch with Gears. This is still true to this deal with Gears of War 3. It's a case of getting a bunch of lives and all it means is if you're unlucky enough to get on a team with a bunch of 
well, arseholes who don't play as a team, or a bunch of people who are just no good at the game, or you're versing a clan, or you're versing a set of campers, it can mean that the multiplayer is over in a flash. One of the worst things that happened to me, that it was the first game I ever played, I spawned, walked forward, got shot in the head with a sniper rifle from a camper, and then I couldn't respawn until the round had ended and I sat waiting 20 minutes for the rest of my team to finally advance enough to either die or win. They ended off dying but it's the fact that they just took forever to actually finish the round and you're sitting there bored shitless really. It's personally why I'm not a fan of Gears Multiplayer. But that's pretty much all I can say. Um, graphically, the game was amazing. Now I'll be honest, it looks pretty crap compared to the likes of Gears 3, which has really outdone itself. But even then, it still actually looks really good in places. And musically, it's not really a musical game. You get bits of music here and there, and it does sound really great, but it's not the type of thing I can exactly show off or listen off. Uh, I suppose it would be because you're not looking at it. Anyway, so if you've never played Gears before, don't just get Gears 3, while I do think it is the best of the three, if you want to get into the story, you really do need to get the first one, and you can pick the first two up for dirt cheap while you're waiting for the third one to go down in price, or you might just want to buy all three together. I personally, as I say, I think it's one of the best games I've ever played. I love the franchise. I've never been keen on third-person shooters, but this came along and blew you away, especially with things like the roadie run and the cover system, which I've never found a game that done the cover system as well as this does, and it, the whole dynamics of the games get better and better with every one. Two totally surpasses one and three totally surpasses two. At least I think so. So there we go then. That's been the review. I hope you found it helpful. I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion, so instead I'll leave you to make your own mind up. So thanks for watching and if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid or that hasn't been answered in the comments then feel free to ask and I'll help if I can. Also if you did find it helpful, don't forget to check out my channel because there's plenty more like this up there. And don't forget to subscribe because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time, this has been Demon212, signing off.